it's time for another one of my DIY projects in my garage. My project today is to build myself a stand or a set of shelves to hold my jack stands. Jack stands are terrible because they take up a ton of floor space and you can't really stack them. So I'm trying to decide how to get rid of these things. So what I've come up with is I'm actually gonna build a vertical shelf, if you will, with four separate shelves for the jack stands. I decided to go vertical instead of horizontal because I want to minimize the space that it takes up on my wall because I'm going to try and put other things on there as well. So this way I can set them vertically and I'm not taking up a whole lot of footprint on my wall. So I'm going to make my shelves nine and a half inches wide by seven and a half inches deep. I'm also going to make my shelves have a little gusset on the end that's going to be about seven inches tall too. So my approximate width of the shelf is going to be about nine and a half by about seven and a half inches there. So I said that my total height is going to be about 13 inches per jack stand. So that means my total height is going to be about 52 inches. I'm going to do the shelves first and bend both ends and then I'm gonna measure the outside dimensions of the shelves and that's when I'm gonna cut my actual size for the width of the back piece that they're gonna be welded to. Now we have to talk about bend radiuses. So whenever you bend material, you're gonna actually gain some length on that. So if I'm measuring seven and a half or nine and a half inches wide and I put two bends on it, it's actually gonna end up wider than nine and a half inches. So you're going to have to calculate your bend radiuses. The 5052 aluminum is quite strong. If you find out that you're having a tough time bending the 5052 aluminum, you can anneal it. And that will remove some of the hardness and make it easier for you to bend. Okay, I've got my four shelves bent up. So if I measure these out from the back side to back side, I measured them out. The outside dimensions actually ends up about an eighth inch strong. So all these shelves turned out to be exactly the same. So I'm going to cut that back piece just about nine and five eighths wide. So this is kind of my dry layout of what it's going to basically look like after I get done welding it together. There's plenty of ways you can cut this stuff. That's one of the reasons I love working with aluminum. The other reason I like it is it's light. It doesn't rust, so I don't have to paint it, and it actually looks good in its, in its raw form. So I'm going to take this over to the Multimatic 220 and TIG weld these together. But before I do so, I'm going to peel that protective film off of these pieces. Now, it looks really nice and clean in, underneath this protective film. The protective film really is only there to keep these things from getting scratched up but you still have an oxide layer on the aluminum. So the best way to clean that off is gonna to be to wire brush it and then take some acetone and clean off that uh, oxide dust that you've just brushed off. For this project, I'm gonna be using the Multimatic 220 ACDC. My material is that 5052 aluminum and it's 080 thick. So if I use my auto set, I can set it anywhere between that 14 gauge and the eighth inch setting and both of those would probably work fine. Because I'm going to be doing some outside corner welds, I'm actually going to take it off of auto set and I like to lower the frequency a little bit. The pro set for this machine or the standard default is 120 on the frequency, but I'm going to drop that down to about 100. And what that's going to do for me is it's actually going to widen the arc just a little bit when I'm working on those outside corner edges. That way I'm melting the full outside edge without having to put too much throttle in it to actually get the arc to widen out. So this way I'm letting the machine work for me on the width of that arc. I'm still gonna turn my amperage down to about that same thickness that I would be welding, you know, roughly eighth inch material. And I'm gonna be managing that amperage with the foot pedal. When I'm not welding an outside corner, I'm going to jump that frequency back up a little bit. And what that's going to do is it's going to concentrate the arc tighter when I'm doing a fillet weld or a T-joint. That's going to make it easier for me to get down in that crack area of that fillet weld. So for those, I'm going to jump it back up to 120 to 130. 
anywhere around there is gonna make it a little bit tighter. Remember, read and follow all labels and the owner's manual. I've wire brushed and cleaned all the joints that I'm gonna be welding. I also installed a gas lens on the end of my TIG torch. The gas lens is gonna give me better gas coverage, especially on these outside corners. The outside corners are always falling away from the weld, so there's no way for the argon to get balled up on the weld joint to keep it shielded. So I like using a gas lens, and it gives me a much better gas coverage zone. I'm gonna try tacking these together without any filler metal first. Sometimes it's a challenge to get the base metal to fuse together, but I think it's gonna work well. Now that I've finished my jack stand storage project, I'm gonna bring it over to the wall and mount it. I'm gonna measure between the ribs on my steel siding and I'm gonna drill two holes and use sheet metal screws to mount it to the wall. One thing I did have a challenge with though is when I was tacking the shelf in the middle, I found that it was trying to pull away from the back piece a little bit. So it would help if you had another pair of hands when you're tacking these shelves together in the middle of the back wall piece if you had somebody or something to put weight on this shelf while you're tacking that to the back so it doesn't pull away or separate. Now that I've completed my jack stand storage shelves, I'm well on the way of getting better organized in my garage. 